What do you have in your house? Nothing but a jar of oil, replied the widow. That little jar of oil was her breakthrough. In this story, we see in the last episode despite Millicent's coldness throughout, we see how quickly the compassion and care that is her true nature inside of her, in her house, came out. So concerned was she for Wentworth that she ran after her, forgetting her own mission, of her eyes on the pastor. We also see through that compassion came her own breakthrough, that caused her to call upon the God that she had turned her back on for years, to save Wentworth's life. It is that compassion that God will multiply for her to cry out for the nations. Let's get to the story. You are up, how was your sleep? Wonderful, I feel better. Thank God it was my day off today. What time is it? 3 p.m. Wow, I slept that long. Not really, you went to sleep at noon and you were up now, you slept, maybe, three hours. David your body needed the rest. Come sit here. Are you hungry? A little, but there is no time to eat. We have to head to the hospital. Hospital? Are you feeling sick? Let's change quickly, I will tell you on the way. As I was saying Jess, the Lord showed me a woman in the hospital, she is in a coma, the Lord wants me to pray for her. I am supposed to lay hands on her and pray for her and the Lord said that he will heal her. Jessica, the Lord showed me her around 20 years ago, she was with a man that she called dad, I saw him crying and looking at the photo of a woman and she was looking at her father. She went to get him something to eat and he refused. Then he turned to his daughter and said, Isabel, I miss her, I really really missed her. At first, I thought someone had died then, as she responded, Dad God will give her back her memory. As I stand here, I Isabel Wentworth your daughter, believe that God will heal her. She served God faithfully and she is a good person, God will not fail her. God will heal her and give her back to you daddy. So her name is Isabel Wentworth and she is now in the hospital in a coma. What happened to her? What caused her to be in a coma? I don't know Jess, what I know is what I told you. The Lord showed me like a dream and then the instruction of the Lord to go and pray for her, that she will be healed. David, we serve an awesome God, who is full of compassion towards all. As Pastor David and his wife heads to the hospital, Millicent was crying out to the Lord in the hospital chapel. I am so grateful that you spared me, after all the wickedness I did, after I turned my back on you. After waking me up each day and not sending my soul straight to hell, to think of the things, I say to you. To think of the men of God, I lord away from your path. I have allowed my heart, my thoughts, to be filled with such bitterness and unforgiveness and caused so much damages to your kingdom. My bitterness of heart put me into pride and spiritual blindness and only your great love and compassion for me that caused you to give, a great sinner like me undeserved mercy. Even though it was like I crucified you lord all over again, yet you took pity on me. Thank you. I am not even worthy to call you father, I feel like a prodigal, no worse than the prodigal son for all the wickedness, I did over the years. I don't know if you can accept me back to your path. You send Lisa to tell me about Grandma Jean's request, to you and I was so bitter, because I did not want to know better. I was full of pride, I can see it now. Forgive me Lord. Here I am before you Lord. Please clean my house, cleanse me. Give me a new slate Lord. You caused me to come because even after you showed me that man with Wentworth you knew because of what he offered me, I would have wavered and you allowed me to come and caught him here and see him for what he is, how mercilessly he was about to kill Wentworth. How easily he lied to the doctor to get access, calling himself her pastor. How easily, he was ready to pass her things on to me because, I am seen like one of them. I don't want to be one of them. I don't want to be so cruel, and heartless like that. I know when I lord those men I did not care about them or their families but I do not want to be that person anymore. Please spare Wentworth's life and I will confess everything to Pastor David, please lord wake her up from that coma, please. It's been very very hard for me to release Barry, and Emmy and as such it caused corruption to come into my soul and out of my house instead of love, please forgive me. I know when I was seven and received you into my heart, I was undeserving, how much more undeserving, I am especially after all the wickedness I did. How many times you could have taken me but you gave me mercy upon mercy. Only you can love and care like this Lord. 
Please forgive me. Please accept me back. I am so sorry, Lord. Millicent continued to pray and lament. Meanwhile, Hi Sarah, are we still on today for the 7 p.m. rehearsal? Yes, of course. I will meet you there. I have a few things I have to do before. I will see you later, Sarah. Sounds good. Mom does not want Millicent to come to my wedding. How will I break it to her? I feel really bad for her. Maybe like Jonathan says, she may not come. I don't want to have to tell her she cannot come. Hi mom, I did not see you come in. Why the long face? Are you okay Sarah? You seem to be deep in thought. I am okay mom, I was just thinking how to break it to Millicent that she cannot come to my wedding, because I know that you do not think that it is a good idea for her to come. Also, I was hoping that she would just not show up to save me from uninviting her. Sarah, we serve a God that is unfathomable. God does not always do what I, what anyone, think he should do. Imagine if God was like us, like me, then none of us would be recipient of his mercy. That's why he said it in Isaiah 55, 8-9, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Why are you saying all this, Mom? Where is this coming from? Sarah the Lord woke me up to pray for Millicent. Millicent. You, Mom, but you called her a Delilah. Yes, Sarah the Lord wanted me to pray for Millicent, so, I obeyed and I prayed, telling the Lord how I see her and what I felt about her because I know the things she had done, but I prayed. Sarah, we do not know how God see people, he knows them best, he knows and see things about them that we do not know or sees. That's true mom, I always felt a compassion towards her, despite her ways. I am not sure what trouble she was in or is in but the Lord impressed upon me to pray for her. I will not stand in the way of your friendship to her Sarah, maybe there is something she is supposed to learn from you. You are her friend and I do not even like her, yet God did not wake you up to pray for her, he woke me up. We are taught to pray for others, even the ones we feel is undeserving. That is why the Apostle Paul exhorts that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all men. James also exhorts us to pray for one another, because the Word of God says, the prayer of a righteous man avails much, James 5:16. Mom. I am still a little shocked that the Lord woke you up to pray for her. Wow! Sarah we can never understand the mind of God, because his ways are not our ways as his words said. If I did not know before, I know now. That God has a higher purpose to which he is working, an eternal purpose and as his children, we are a part of his eternal plan. Help me Lord, that I must never forget that your thoughts and plans and ways are working together for good to those that are the called according to your purpose. True words mom, amen. Meanwhile, Father please wake her up, I will say her full name Lord, although she likes to be called Wentworth. Here I am calling upon you Lord, please wake Isabel Wentworth up. Nothing is hard for you. Thank you Father for hearing me, I cannot explain but I am feeling that you heard me. Thank you once again for your great mercy towards me and all of those who strayed away from your paths. Thank you for not leaving us in the decay of our mind, but instead you reached out and pulled us back to you. I bless you Father. In Jesus name Amen. I must call the sitter to see if she pick up Nicola from school. Miss Amanda, it's me Millie, Millicent. Did you remember to pick up Nicola from school? Yes, of course. She is in the kitchen having a snack right now. Thank you so much, Miss Amanda. I will pick her up around 8 p.m. Thanks again. Let me go check on Wentworth. A call is coming in. It's Nicole. Hi, Nicole. How are you, Millicent? The Lord woke me up to pray for you. How is Wentworth doing? She is still in a coma, but she almost died. Did she stop breathing? Someone tried to kill her. What? Why? Who? Millicent told Nicole all about Prophet Tramper, 
how he called after Nicole left and what he said about the Lord sending blessings to her, sums of money and a car. I truly thought it was from God and I was so excited, hearing that I was also going to get a vehicle as well. I was glorifying God saying after all I did that the Lord would bless me like that I was so amazed and happy. The Lord visited me in the night and showed me he and Wentworth together laughing and talking about me. When I woke up I partially believed, so as soon as I dropped Nicola off at school, I head to the hospital, and when I got here, I was very surprised to see Prophet Tramper talking to Wentworth's doctor. After he walked away from the doctor, I approached the doctor who told me that Tramper was Wentworth's pastor and he came to pray for her. I asked the doctor if I could go into the room as well and he said yes. I was by Wentworth's door, when I heard him saying to her still in a coma, that she is of no use and that she worn out her welcome and that everything that belongs to her will be made available for me, goodbye, nice knowing you. Needless to say, I was very shocked, I could not believe what I was hearing and seeing. I told myself that I was going to confront him and that's when I saw him with the pillow in his hands, close to Wentworth's face. So I ran back and alerted the nurses and Wentworth's doctor and then I called the police and they came and took him away. Dear Lord, no wonder the Lord woke me up to pray and maybe he woke others up too. God allowed you to see him, or he would continue to deceive you Millie. Jesus, Jesus, there are some very evil people in this world. Help us Lord to always walk in obedience towards you Lord. Nicole, I truly appreciate you praying for me. Maybe God used the prayers prayed for me to intercept and show me how spiritually blind I was and the destructive paths I was on. I am so very grateful for his great mercy upon my life Nicole. I don't know what I did to deserve it. Anyway, let me go check on her, I will keep in touch to let you know what's happening. Thank you so much for praying for me. I really needed it. Talk to you soon. Millicent left the hospital chapel. Is that not Jessica? Pastor David's wife, I wonder why she is here. Let me say hello to her. Hello Jessica. Hi Millicent, how are you? Have not seen you in a long time. You know the Lord woke us up to pray for you last night. The Lord did the same with Nicole as well, she was praying for me. It is really nice to see you again Jessica. Excuse me, I have to go check on my friend to see how she is doing, she is in a coma. A coma? We are here to see someone who is in a coma, someone tried to arm her earlier, pretending to be her pastor, he was arrested and so David has to show his credentials to the doctors, they are making a copy of his driver's license and minister credentials and then he will be able to go in and see her. Do you mind if I ask you her name? Her name is Isabel Wentworth. Wentworth, that's my friend. How do you guys know her? We don't, in fact we never met her before. God visited David and told him to come and pray, that she is in a coma. The Lord told David her name and things about her. He said that he is going to heal her. Upon hearing that Millicent began to cry uncontrollably, she was saying after all that I tried to do, God really heard my cry. Millicent was wailing as if someone died, Jessica went beside her and she cried in Jessica's arm. David came with the doctor at the same time and Jessica told him to just go and pray for Wentworth, that she would agree with him but now she could see that she could not leave Millicent in that condition because she needed help. David left with the doctor to see Isabel Wentworth, while Jessica tried her best to console Millicent. After Millicent stopped crying, she said to Jessica, there are many things I have to tell you. Can we go somewhere and talk? Millicent confessed everything to Jessica. From the day she cleaned their church until she brought Wentworth there, she cried and cried asking Jessica can you find it in your heart to forgive me. Jessica then told her that God revealed everything and even about her childhood to her marriage that God showed her about Millicent. Jessica then said to her, let's go back to the waiting area in case David came out and wondering where I am. Millicent, the Lord revealed the things to us because he trusts us that we would not use it to condemn you but rather to pray for you. Millicent, all the Lord wants is obedient willing vessels. The Lord showed me what your husband and best friend did to you but he made your father warn you and tell you to go in fasting before you married him but you did not do that. Why did the Lord not show me Barry instead of my dad? 
because your mind was already made up to be with him. Even if the Lord sent an angel before you, you would not have listened. Then when you found out you let bitterness and unforgiveness into your heart, that was how both Tramper and Isabel Wentworth was able to easily come into your life because of the door of bitterness and unforgiveness that you left wide open. In all my waywardness, the Lord still pursued me and gave me mercy, sending into my life friends like Nicole, Lisa and you guys to pray for me. Millicent, the quickest way to conquer an enemy is to treat that enemy with kindness in return for their unkindness. The lesson our master teaches us is to forgive injury quickly, to return kindness for unkindness, to return good for evil and love for hate. If we allow ourselves to grow bitter, to ponder resentments in our thoughts, and to let any hurt feeling linger and take roots of bitterness in our hearts, then we are basically saying to the enemy, I am in unforgiveness, I am open for business. Then the enemy comes in and assigned unforgiveness to our love post, love gets driven out, and unforgiveness takes control. Oh God, I never realized what I did to myself for years, what I let into and took into my house. In Luke 6 27-29, Jesus tells us, Love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. Many of us are too easily offended and so we fall into the enemy's trap to retaliate, when others say or do evil things against us, if we leave it in God's hands, he will take care because he has the best plan. The enemy loves when we hold people into our hearts, because that is his way he can blind and trap us. Never thought about it like that. Help me Lord never to go down this path again. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter 5, 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Whom, he, may, devour, because he cannot devour everyone. If you know your enemy and are not ignorant of his schemes, it makes the battle so much easier. If you know very little about your enemy, the battle will be much more difficult. Because the Lord spoke to David and asked him to change the Bible study for prayer meeting, when Isabel Wentworth came, she was not able to enter because not only did we pray inside the church, but outside and along the hallways and elevator, that is why when she came off the elevator, she could not enter and she had to run away. Nothing or no one can stand against the power of God. While Jessica continued to talk to Millicent, she looked up and saw that Pastor David and the doctor was coming towards them. The doctor was visibly shaken and appeared to have been crying. He was saying, You have made me a believer. What medicine could not do, God did. Upon hearing that, Millicent got up and ran into Wentworth's room. She was shocked to see Wentworth sitting up with all the tubes off her, looking like nothing had happened to her. Wentworth, you are awake, all the tubes, everything is taken off you. You are like you old self again. Thank you Jesus. Oh, Lord you are so merciful, you healed her, you really healed her Lord. I have repented and Pastor David prayed for me after I came out of the coma, Millicent it is like, I was not in a coma, I felt so renewed, I felt like I have never been sick a day in my life. Millicent, I was in hell fire burning, the Lord gave me mercy because I cried out and told him how sorry I was and repented. I will spend the rest of my life serving him Millicent. There is no power greater than the power of God. The power of the Spirit of God. None greater than our Lord Jesus who died for us. I have wasted so much time because I was angry about my mom who served God diligently and was robbed of her memory and had to be placed into a home. My twin brother who disappeared without a trace. I watched my father deteriorate as he suffered these past 20 years of loneliness and stress, first because of my brother and then my mom who was the strength of the ministry and when she took sick it's like my dad gave up. He had lost his son and now his wife. Our home became doom and gloom and I was very angry at God. I cried out and prayed and the prayers were not answered. Goodness me Wentworth, our lives are so similar. Grandma Jean was not my biological family, but she raised and helped me since my early teen years, and when she lost her memory and passed on I partially turned from God, because I felt that he should have healed her. I just learned from my friend her granddaughter few days ago that she wanted to go home to the Lord. I became mad at God when my dad passed, as well and went down a destructive path. 
I am the only child they have now and I saw to it that both my parents are taken care of, but I do not visit my mom in the home anymore, I just call and check on her daily, I cannot bear it that she does not know who I am and that she does not know my dad either. I tried to get someone, some kind of companion for my dad but he still held out hope for my mom's recovery, even when I gave up on God long ago. It breaks my heart to see people lonely and hurting, and that is why when I met Tramper and he took me to his master, I told him that I did not want to break any family, but would love to bring comfort to lonely souls, I saw it as helping them. I was blinded to the fact that I was still leading them into sin, fornication and adultery, I thought that I was doing good since no family was broken. I was so blinded. I thought that it gave me a new reason to be happy, because there was no happiness at home anymore. Wentworth, I still cannot believe the length we both went to because of the bitterness in our hearts and the unforgiveness. Being mad at God, not realizing that we were on the path to hell and destruction. It's 7 p.m. now and I have to go and get my daughter from the sitter, I have to get a cab, she is about 30 minutes away. Before you go, I have to tell you what happened the day. When I got off the elevator I felt a force, I fwlt like I was being burned, my feet felt like chains were on them and as I got close to the David's Divine Intervention Church, I saw this large angel in shiny white clothing with a sword drawn. I thought that I was going to die. By the time I got to my car, I collapsed and I saw myself in torment. I was crying out to the Lord that I will repent crying out for mercy, and then he showed me a vision of my father praying for me and then when he sent me back, I think that's when I went into the coma and was like that until Pastor David prayed for me and God compelledly healed me as if it never happened to me. I can still hear the voice of the Lord, Isabel, you will be healed, go your way and sin no more or there will be no more pardon for you. He forgave me and gave me a brand new start, I will never let him out of my heart again. I will serve him the rest of my life. No matter what, my eye will always be on the Lord. I have not seen my mother in over five years, though I talk with her daily. I will go and see her tomorrow. The doctor already checked me and he gave his life to the Lord after seeing my sudden recovery after Pastor David prayed but he said that he will keep me in for routine checks and then I will be discharged tomorrow. I am so sorry that I worked together with Prophet Tramper to deceive you but I learned from the doctor that you saved me from him taking my life. I could hear what he was saying, but I was helpless to do anything. Please forgive me. There is nothing to forgive Wentworth, I am just glad that the Lord had healed you, because I felt responsible, for what happened to you and had you not recovered, that is why I cried so much for you, I do not think that I could forgive myself. I feel like we are sisters. Because we are, sisters in Christ. Let me run to go and pick up my Nicola, I have to make some amends, there are some people that I need to call also. One final request? Can you please accompany me to see my mother tomorrow? Certainly. Call you later. Look at you Wentworth, Jesus thank you, thank you. Meanwhile. Exodus 15 11, who is like you, O Lord? among the gods. Who is like you, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? Who compares with you among the gods, O God? Who compares with you in power, in holy majesty, in awesome praises, wonder-working God? Lord in one sweep, you took Millicent back to your path, you healed Isabel Wentworth and you saved an unbelieving doctor, who is like unto you Lord. No one. Who compares with you among gods, O God? Who compares with you in power, in holy majesty, in awesome praises, wonder-working God? Jess I feel so full, I feel no hunger. We cannot go home, let's head to our church, send out a message that we are having a revival meeting of thanksgiving and praise tonight, Jess. Both Dr. Bob and Isabel Wentworth are now our new members. Isabel's father is a former pastor who resigned due to his wife's sickness, she gave me his number, I will call him and visit with him to strengthen him, one day next week. Send the message to Millicent as well Jess, I believe that if she come out tonight there's something more the Lord will do for her. Nicole also got the alert and she said to Sarah. I just saw a message flash from Divine Intervention Church, they are having a revival meeting tonight, I think that I am going to stay back for it. I want to stay too, I would love to meet this pastor, 
after all the wonderful things you say about him and his wife. Jonathan already went with mom, both of them are doing night shift tonight. So I will stay back and give you a ride later. Meanwhile at Millicent's home. Nicola honey, I have to drop you back to Miss Amanda, I already called her. I have to go to the Divine Intervention Church Revival meeting tonight, I feel a strong pull, God wants me to be there. I have not seen you like this mommy, you are so happy. Even your face seem peaceful. It is our God Nicola. He answered my prayer to make you smile again mommy and I'm so happy. Oh, my baby girl. Many people went to the revival meeting, the church was packed. Many was amazed when the doctor stand and say what God did earlier that day when Pastor David prayed, I saw this miracle with my own eyes, the doctor told them. Even though I was very tired after my shift, when I saw the message about the meeting, I had to be here. I was a believer in just medicine, but now I am a believer in God. I saw a miracle before my eyes today that cannot be denied and so I gave my life right then and there to God. This is a true man of God right here. People of God let's give God the praises and glory for what he has done. Amen. Pastor David called Mulesen to the stage. I cleaned this room on the first day of the service. I was on the dark side and so my plan was to seduce the man of God, but God did not allow me near him. The lady that the doctor spoke about whom God supernaturally healed today came with me to go against the man of God, but she could not enter the sanctuary. See how merciful God is. God still used Pastor David to pray for her healing and his wife to pray and intercede for me, although God showed them what I was planning against the pastor, the ministry and his wife. People of God, there are no power greater than God and had it not been for his great mercies towards me, he would have cut me off and I would have died in my sins for all the wickedness I did against his servant and his kingdom. Please hear me people, forgive and forgive quickly, do not let bitterness into your hearts. Pastor David speak over Millicent's life. Hear the word of the Lord for you, just as our door is number 555, and God led you here, you intended to do damage but God turned it around for good. Five is the number of grace, and he showed my wife that you are the fifth child, born on the fifth month, the fifth day of the month. He has granted you grace upon, grace, upon grace. That is why he led you here even after your righteous living to welcome you back, like the prodigal son. After saying those words Pastor David prayed for Millicent and said, Now that you have returned back to your first love, the candlestick in your house will be glorious. Like the woman with the jar of oil, multitude will now benefit from what you have in your house. Your ladder is now greater. You must sincerely from your heart release everyone, especially your ex-friend Emmy and your ex-husband Barry. Leave no room for the enemy to enter again. Meanwhile, Nicole and Sarah in the audience was in tears, saying about Millicent, that's my friend. God has changed her and brought her back to her first love. Later after the meeting. What a glorious meeting. I know that Millie had to run to pick up her daughter. Now I know why they say small world, we both know her, without realizing. Yes, I know. God woke up my mom to pray for her and he woke you up to pray for her as well. With what she told about her childhood and what she has been through, no wonder the enemy wanted to lead her astray. Her life is a great testimony, just imagine, the lives that she will touch and the souls she will bring into God's kingdom. I am so glad I stayed back for the meeting. You know I have my own church, but I will be visiting Divine Intervention, every chance I get. Let's go, we both have work in the morning. I cannot wait to tell my mom about what happened tonight. Glory to God. Later that night. Heavenly Father thank you for what you did today, thank you for the miracle you gave to Wentworth. Thank you for the salvation miracle that you brought to Dr. Bob, I release every person to you again completely. My ex-husband and former friend Emmy. I repent of all known and unknown sins, I do not want anything ever again to ever separate me from you my Lord. Thank you for my life, thank you for my daughter, that she was crying out to you without my knowledge, to make me smile. She said that she has never seen me smile because she was only one and a half years when her father left us. Thank you for the pure heart you gave her Lord. I pray that she will serve you every day of her life. 
When I think of where I could have ended, had it not been for your mercy and the people you had crying out for me. Thank you for the Davids, Sarah and her family, thank you for Lisa who is away visiting in the country, thank you for Nicole, thank you for every person that you have ever used to cry out for mercy for me, thank you Lord that you told all your servants, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work and you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ, thank you that you will keep us. Because your word said it in John 6:37, all that the Father give you shall come to you, and anyone that cometh to you, you will in no wise cast out. Help me Lord that from this day forwards, I will be counted among those that the Father give you. Amen. That night the Lord visited Millicent and showed her a great crowd and she was ministering, winning souls for the kingdom of God. The Lord told Millicent, I will use you greatly in restoring families, I give you your first assignment tomorrow. Never forget, had I not took your father, there was a trap set for him to lead him away from my path and so I took him home. When your work is ended, you will meet him again. I will never leave you or forsake you. Always keep your eyes on me, no matter the situation. This is one of my promise to all my servants, Isaiah 26, 3 2, you will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, because he trusts in you. The next day. I am here Wentworth, how are you feeling today? I am feeling really great. Thank you for sending Pastor David's revival meeting last night. It truly blesses me. Did you bring the clothes? I sure did, you are all set, I will go out while you change. I also brought you a comb to do your hair. I hope the clothes will fit you, we are about the same size. Wentworth, you look really nice. The clothes fit you like a glove. I have a question, how come you introduce yourself as Wentworth? instead of your first name Isabel. About that it just slipped me. That is one of the things the Lord dealt with me about, he gave my parents the name to give me. Do you know what Isabel means? It means, devoted to God or pledged to God, I refused to go by my first name when I saw, my mother, who live a life devoted to God and yet she was robbed of her memory, she did not know me or my dad, and no matter my prayers, my dad's, prayers, she was not healed. My dad became withdrawn and resigned from pastoring the church. I was so mad at God and I did not want to use my first name anymore. Please call me by my first name Isabel, from now on. It is pleasing to the Lord and it is a great blessing to have the name, I was in great rebellion and almost end in hell because of it. Thank God for his mercy upon me, though I worked together with Tramper to deceive many he did not leave me in that condition. Let's go see my mom, she is five years overdue for a visit, Pastor David promised to go and see my dad next week. Millicent and Isabel went to the home where Isabel's mother is and Millicent expected to see someone very frail and fragile but Mrs. Wentworth was singing and praising God. Millicent prayed for her and the power of God hit her and her complete memory was returned. She said to Isabel, look at my baby girl pledged and devoted to God, give your mama a hug. Isabel Wentworth cried in her mother's arm, many came to Jesus the night in the home because of the miracle that happened for Mrs. Wentworth after 20 long years. That same day Isabel took her home to her father, who was shocked and happy at the same time, crying tears of joy. I had to give up the church, I felt, I did not have the strength to do it without you, our son. We did not know what happened to him and now you were here in body but gone in mind. I hope day after day that God would bring you back to me, my son back and my daughter back into his arms and he has brought you and Isabel back to his path and I believe that he will do the same one day for Isaac and he will return. I still have hope in Nita. Glory to the living God, for what he has done. Your hair is now all gray, but you look distinguished and very handsome. You know when Millicent prayed for me, I felt like something lifted off me. Now I remember everything, I was in the kitchen thinking so much about our Isaac, left to the market his roommate at his dorm set and he never returned. It was their 19th birthday and I was feeling very very sad and overwhelmed. My sister had called to wish Isabel happy birthday and she began talking about Isaac, I was so sad not knowing and I don't know if you remember, I did not even go to church that day and when you came home, I did not know who you were. 
At first you thought that I was joking around but then you realized that it was serious and something was wrong. Multiple doctors and they could not understand what happened. That thought came into me when my sister was asking me, how could I go on without my son? What did not affect me before? I allowed into my house and it robbed us of so many years. Thanks be to God for his healing touch. That Millicent will be a second daughter to us and I still believe the same way God pulled Isabel out of the enemy's hands, the same way God brought back my memory, he will bring our son home someday, safe and sound. Two weeks later. Thank you for seeing me sir. You look like someone in a photo I saw a couple weeks ago. Sir do you know the Wentworths? I am afraid not. Please have a seat. My spiritual father, Pastor David, who is the pastor of Divine Intervention Church has been doing great work in the community. He would like to establish a community center that will equip the youths from various backgrounds teaching them about the things of God and teaching them life skills as well. In our research, we found out that this is one of your company's passion to assist churches that want to help the young people. The reason why I am here sir, we learned that there is a grant that your company offers and we hope that we will be qualified for that grant to assist our church. All that you said is true, leave your information with my secretary, including your number and I will get back to you tomorrow. Thank you very much sir, look forward to hear from you. I know that this will sound a little strange, but can I use my phone to take a picture of you sir? Sorry to ask. Sure. Millicent took the photo and then she left. Lord you see, I had to control myself, that is the girl that you showed me in a vision, that is going to be my wife. You said that I would not have to go look for her, you would send her to me. Sorry Lord that I dismissed her so quickly, but I could not believe that she was right in front of my face. I will help the pastor, if he is truly your servant. Later the day. Millicent speaking, oh hello Mr. Stedman, I did not expect to hear from you today sir. Call me Michael, the reason for the call, I would like to get the address for your church, I want to pay your church a visit to see where it is located. Millicent gave Michael the church's address and she told Michael that today is our Bible study and our pastor went to the church early so you can speak to him before the Bible study. Wonderful, I can head there, right away. Michael Stedman, heads to Divine Intervention. Meanwhile, Millicent sent Wentworth the photo who said that Michael Stedman had an uncanny resemblance to my twin brother. In fact, he look exactly like him just a little older with facial hair. Isabel told Millicent, I am heading to the church, with the Bible study supplies, if I see him face to face, I will know right away. You must be Mr. Stedman. My spiritual daughter told me that you were coming, I have a couple of hours before Bible study. So you are interested in building a center for the youth. I would love to help with that but I had to see if you indeed have a legitimate church. Pastor David showed all the church's paperwork to Michael Stedman including his credentials. Michael Stedman was very happy to see that everything was in order with the church. As he walked Michael Stedman back to the elevator, he felt a prompting to pray for him. He asked, do you mind if I pray for you? Certainly. I never refuse prayer. Pastor David prayed for Michael and then the Lord revealed. Your birth name is not Michael Stedman. The Lord is showing me that you are Isaac Wentworth. I don't know what to say. I have no memory of my past. I was found on the side of the road beaten and left for dead by Mr. Benjamin Stedman an oil tycoon, who never had any biological children. I was in such bad condition that when he called in his own personal physician, they never thought that I would make it through the night. I lived and he adopted me as his own son. You would have never thought that I was not his own biological son because of how he treated me. When he passed he left everything to me, all his properties and companies. His only wish was that I would run the company with integrity, helping the house of God. Your biological parents are alive. I have met them and you have a twin sister, Isabel Wentworth. She should be here any moment dropping off the things for the church. Let me call her to see where she is. And by the elevator pastor, I will be there shortly. When Isabel Wentworth saw her brother, she almost fainted, with the exception of the facial hair, she knew that was her missing brother. He agreed to go see his parents, the moment he saw his mother, his memory came back like a flash. It was a great reunion. He told them that Millicent was the woman the Lord showed for his wife. 
One year later Pastor David married Millicent and Isaac. That night as Millicent glorified God, she thanked the Lord for all that he did in her life and how she almost lose her soul and everything to the kingdom of darkness. She said to the Lord, Indeed you gave me grace upon grace, and now Isaac and I head the prophetic division of the Divine Intervention Church. God you are truly amazing, my grandma Jean, my mother-in-law had memory issue and my husband, through it all you were preparing me for a great blessing. You allowed me to pray for my mother-in-law and she got her memory back and you allowed my spiritual father Pastor David to pray for my husband. You are keeping him for me Lord and you showed me to him in a dream. Unknow to me you had prepared for me my husband and I did not have to rush for Barry. The only good thing come from that relationship is my daughter Nicola. My wonderful Heavenly Father, you had my husband all along, but I had to race and derail my life. As I think about the head-on collision that took Emmy's life instantly and Barry, who survived and I went to the hospital and with tears even his daughter Nicola pleaded with him to give his life to you and he refused, then succumbed to his injury and his soul lost. What great mercy you gave me and you send me a man who loves you with his whole heart. We have no lack, we have more money than we could ever spend in our lifetime. Thank you for my spiritual parents the Davids and thank you for my in-laws the Wentworths. You gave me threefold grace for family, a church family, my in-laws and my own family. We are booked the next several months to go minister all over the world. You showed me that although it was very terrible what happened to my husband, you ordained his life that way, you caused Mr. Stedman to find him beaten because you had a great plan for him to finance your church and your people. Indeed, all things work together for the good. As I have returned to my first love and the candlestick stand in place in my life. Thank you for your many blessings in my life. That now like the widow the abundant oil of your nine fruit now pour like oil out of my house touching multitude as I tell them of my story, a surprise pregnancy, a mother's death, rejection, abandonment, losing it all, came pretty close to almost lose my soul to now embrace you all sufficient grace. I went back to you, who know my worth. You had prepared and hand-picked the husband that you wanted for me, once on the wrong path, now like the widow, I have closed the door on my past, went straight into the arms of you God who know my worth. Thank you for loving me so very much. I, Millicent, Wentworth, who once was rejected and seen of no worth, you love me and saved me, you went for me because in you was my worth. Thank you for all you brought to my life in Jesus' name Amen. Matthew 11 28 to 30 Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Matthew 18 11 to 13 For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. If any man has a hundred sheep, and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go and search for the one that is straying? If it turns out that he finds it, truly I say to you, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine which have not gone astray. You are of great value to me, all you need is a repentant heart, and I will pour in your vessel my oil of love, if you receive it, you will not lack, just like the widow, who did not lack any more. So that out of your house you will bring forth my abundance, multiplied in you to distribute to multitudes. Bye and thank you for watching. It is our prayer that you were blessed by this series. We hope that it encourages you to be mindful of what you take into your house, because whatever you take in will either bring abundance and blessings to multitude or bring bitterness and distress to the searching. May God bless and keep you. Be sure to subscribe, like and share. Have a wonderful day.